morning. I hope this, as usual, I <laughs> hope this video finds everyone well. I'm out here in my screen tent having some early morning coffee and I'm happy to report that it's done pretty good. Uh, since that last video where I put it up, I came out here two or three times and haven't gotten bitten yet. And uh, you can't see it from there, but this thing's think, uh, thing seems to have settled down some, and uh, that gap at the bottom is a lot less than what it was. Of course, I'm sure some of the grass has grown up too. And that's a little bit about what this uh, video is today. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about where I'm parked, and uh, not just uh, people on YouTube, but uh, couple of people I work with and a couple other friends and uh, there's really a long story to this whole thing and I'm going to show you around in a little bit this house is uh, really turned into a mess and I hate it for my buddy even though it works out for me real well I hate it for him because uh, He's probably going to lose a lot of money on this thing. But I'm going to go way back to the beginning. I also had a couple of viewers mention that they liked a little bit of my history. But uh, I met this fellow. And this is one of the dates I remember. Because I'd gone over to Atlanta in uh, 1984 with a girl I met that was from there and uh, her and I didn't stay together for about a year but or not even that long but I ended up staying over there and running a couple of nightclubs worked some construction too and uh, so these dates stick in my head because they were a big move but uh, I came back from Atlanta I stayed over there after me and that girl broke up. But I came back from Atlanta about four and a half years after that, four and a quarter years, uh, in 1988. And uh, I went back into construction, but I was down having a couple of beers at this bar that a friend of mine owned that I that I had worked for before. And he said he needed some help on the weekend, and I thought, well, why not? So. I started bartending down there on uh, Friday and Saturday night, which ended up being a whole lot more than that down the road. But, uh, but anyway, that's where I met this friend of mine that owns this house back in 88. And uh, we got to know each other through that uh, bar I worked in down there. And so he had a roommate he was renting his mother's house his mother owned two or three houses and he was renting one of them and uh, his roommate moved out and he asked me if I would like to move in there and uh, so I thought well why not so I moved in there as a roommate splitting rent and this is where it gets kind of funny because him and his girlfriend bought a house and uh, so he was going to move into the house and they were going to fix it up and flip it. And so he said, well, you can move in that house down there uh, that we just bought if you want to. So we came up with a price on that and uh, I said, okay, I'll move in there. And so we lived there for, I don't know, two or three years. Him and his girlfriend in the meantime had broken up. He ended up with a house, and so he sold it, and we moved into an apartment complex in a two-bedroom uh, apartment, and I really liked living there. It was real easy, but we didn't uh, stay. We had a six-month lease, and we stayed the six-month lease, and he had found him another girlfriend, and uh, of course, I've had a couple in between there, too, but... Uh, Anyway, so 
he decided to marry her, so uh, they bought a house, and it had a finished basement. So he said, you know, if you want to, you can uh, rent out that finished basement in that house. <laughs> so I said, well, we came to a price, of course, and I said, okay, uh, I'll move in there. And I enjoyed living there, too, and, and uh, he commented a couple of times to some uh, mutual friends that he thought I could uh, he thought I could live in a cave and the truth probably is that that I could uh, I have no issue living in that RV as long as I've got a, a toilet and a refrigerator and a sink I'm in a place to put a television I'm in good shape but anyway uh, he split up with that girl and we went a couple more years and he found another one <laughs> found another girlfriend married her and uh, so I was still living in that house and so they fixed that one up real good and sold it and about that time my dad died and my mother uh, had never lived alone in her whole life and so I moved in with her for about a year at the same time that uh, my friend was uh, getting another divorce and selling this house so that worked out pretty good and uh, so after I moved out of my mother's house I moved in with the, this other roommate we rented a, a two bedroom apartment and it was a she but we were friends and I not intimate or anything just really friends I call those uh, friend girls instead of girlfriends she was a friend girl <laughs> so uh, we stayed there through the lease and she wanted to move so she could get somewhere uh, for kids and grandkids and stuff like that so I got another apartment on my own for a year and then I ran into my old buddy here again and uh, he said he had bought this house and if I wanted to move into it, I could move in. Because on the end of it, there's like a mother-in-law house. It was a room addition that was built on the end of this house a long time ago. And uh, so it was actually more square feet than the one-bedroom apartment I'd moved out of. So it was plenty big enough for me. Uh, it had a walk-in closet. It had a real big bathroom. You know, a place I could cook and wash dishes, uh, plenty of room for beds and, and furniture and all that stuff. So I moved into there, and I guess I'd lived there about eight years uh, until I bought this RV. But in the meantime, and I'll show you what's happened to it here. Uh, in the meantime, his mother had gotten ill, and he moved out of the house, and it has uh, been just left to go in disrepair, I'm going to say now for about a good four years, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute, but uh, he's really going to lose money on this I know and I hate it for him but it works out okay for me because the only thing I'm paying here is the power bill and I love living here and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in this next frame coming up so stay tuned so anyway a part that I left out of this is that uh, the house where I rented the basement when he was getting a divorce from that girl of course they made out a list of uh, stuff that they wanted to uh, give to the, the attorneys I guess but anyway she had uh, decided she wanted half the house which he actually put down all the down payments and all that but uh, it was kind of funny. He was telling everybody, if I give somebody half my house, you know it was going to be me because <laughs> I'd been the one 
that was paying for half of it. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. But me and that guy have now been friends and roommates for how, how, how long ago it was 84. That sounds like a good get pushing 30 years here or more. I'm not going to figure out the math. But anyway, what you're looking at right now is the driveway coming down the hill. And that's the only way in here. And from time to time, some of those limbs have been trimmed down, but I really don't care if they're there or not. This is really private where I am down here. And I like it that way. This is a bridge over a small creek that flows down through there. And all of this used to be cut down. And I have plenty of spiders around here. But this used to be cut down and over these years that he has been gone and I've been coming and going it has really been growing like crazy and these are mimosa trees and they are impossible to keep back I have cut all of these down before you can see them growing Here, that has all been cut down, and it's all been cut down back over there. And this, you can start to see, this house has just been let go. You can see a light burning up there. I use that for a night light. I have to go up there and change that bulb every once in a while. But I told my friend that I would clear this walkway up through here and I did before I went down to Florida I cleared that all out through there and uh, I was down there in Florida for three months through the winter and I came back here in the spring of course and uh, then this stuff all started growing again and so I'm going to get in here and chop all this back down and get it opened up so that if anybody comes over here and wants to see the house for him to sell it then they can do that and uh, talking about the selling of the house I really don't know how long I'll be able to stay here I'm I'm hoping for his sake he can sell it. Kind of hoping for my sake, sake that I can stay here. But this used to be all yard. Uh, I mean yard like you could take a lawnmower and mow the yard. <laughs> and over these four or five years it's uh, completely grown up and uh, Woods have taken over. Weeds have taken over. But like I said, I'm down here. And there's a good shot of a mimosa up there. Over the top of my RV. You can see those vines growing. All around the house here. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. But, uh, anyway, I have no issue with this. A lot of people would. Somebody that sees this video might think it's nuts. But I have plenty of area here for my car, my RV, my boat trailer, and uh, my new little screen tent over there. <laughs> and there's there's my toe dial but used to be that was yard all through there all that was yard 
yard all up through there. And uh, you know, now I want you to look at some of the size of these trees, though. I mean, this is really fantastic. And this is just like living out in the woods. That's what I like about it. Now, I have seen a fox here, a coyote. I've been awakened in the night with uh, coyote pups yelping. Uh, there are possums and uh, raccoons and I've seen uh, hawks. Uh, there's an uh, uh, owl that lives here. I hear it hooting through the middle of the night. Look at those trees up there, just big giant trees. So there are critters galore here. Oh, and don't let me forget the deer. I've seen does and bucks and I've even came out here at night a few times with the light shining it out through the woods and you could see uh, eyes light up from the deer where they had uh, decided to nestle down for the evening. Uh, last time I saw some deer, which was just a few days ago with the light, they were just right out in there. You could see... Uh, five or six sets of eyes looking back at you where the uh, light was reflecting off the back of their eyes. But I think this place is just too neat. And I hope this shows up back in here. But I said the water had been turned off. Uh, he thinks there's a leak somewhere. And probably is, so... I bring water from work. I have two of these five gallon buckets. And I have about a ten I have about ten of these gallon jug things. And uh they're in the car. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it isn't too bad. Uh, I, I set the container up here higher than the uh, entryway to my water there and I made a siphon hose which is this right here I just keep it hung up over this window on the rear view mirror and so I uh, fill these containers up at work now I have gotten water a couple other places but I get 96 98 percent of the water at work but i've come uh and siphon that in there every, uh, every uh day i go to work you know, i work wednesday thursday friday and saturday so i'm off sunday monday and tuesday so those three days the water supply starts to go down a little bit and then I get water every day at work for the four days I work. And which yesterday was the end of my four day cycle. So right now, my water tanks are full. These two jugs are full. And I've got about 10 of these things that are full. The other ones are in the car right now. I haven't even unloaded them. So I've got plenty of water to last me way into uh, next Wednesday when it's time to go back to work. And then I'll start collecting water again. So this all works out real well for me. Now I do, another disadvantage is that I have to go to a dump every once in a while. I'm talking dump, not trash dump, but black tank dump. <laughs> so that can be a little bit of a pain, but uh, I'm glad to do that because otherwise I probably wouldn't be starting my engine very often. So 
that's a good opportunity for me to uh, start the RV, drive it, uh, get the uh, vehicle's battery charged back up and uh, get oil up into the pistons and it's just going to run better and last longer uh, if any vehicle will if you drive it every once in a while. So I go down to a camping world. I'm a member of that good Sam and I can dump there free. It's not a very good dump because they don't have any water there. Uh, their dump isn't built up with concrete around and stuff like a lot of them. It's just a hole in the ground. So uh, you drive your vehicle up there and there's a hole in the ground and uh, you take your hose and put a rock on the top of it or something to hold it down and open up the tanks and let them go. But uh, I'm not far from work. It's only uh, takes me 12 or 14 minutes to get to work depending on you know what the traffic might be and I'm just uh, tickled to death to be able to stay here and uh, hopefully again it's not good for him but good for me if I could stay here until I took off out to the southwest it'd be fine with me but anyway if anybody was curious about where I'm parked and how I ended up here that's about that's about all the story I can tell about it. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, have another drink of coffee. Boy, that sun's getting up now. Let's have another drink of coffee, and uh, it'll be Monday when you get this video. And I uh, hope everyone's doing real well. Mm -hmm.